What's that? For rentals, how do you normally determine your offer amount? Yeah, so that just like I would text you yesterday, I try to figure out what the ROI is going to be. And the higher, the better, the easier it's going to be to sell. Okay. Did that make sense of what I saw? Uh, what yeah, I saw what you sent me yesterday. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. I'll just give you a quick, um, let me just do a quick review or view of, can you guys see my screen here? Yes. Okay. Hang on one second, let me see, Chun. Let me pull it up here. All right, here it comes again. All right, here you go. So I have a calculation form here. So I kind of work it like if it's a rental, let's say you're getting it for 15 grand and you want to add five on there. So the acquisition price is 20,000. And let's say the repairs, estimated repairs right here is 7,000. So an investor is going to be all in at 27 grand. Okay. So um you figure out what the rent amount is let's say the rent is 750 in taxes i always figure 50 to 60 dollars in detroit so we're going to high end you got reserve for maintenance 75 and then you have reserve or you got um management fee which is 10 percent of the rent so you got another 75, okay? And then taxes, what you, you probably know how to do this already. I'm gonna look at a house that I'm working on. Or one, three, seven, one. I just go to real comp, pull up an address. Let's go to an address I grew up in. I go to county records right here, county. And then I go to Wayne County. My address where I grew up is 13996 Burt Road. Oh, I gotta take out the road part, else it won't pull up. And then here's where you find the taxes, right here. 2019 it's taxes are low here it's a bit you know my house i grew up in they tore it down so it's assessed differently now but let's say the taxes were 800 a month 800 divided by 12 whatever that equals here i'll tell you one second You should know this by heart, but I don't. $67 a month. So right here, taxes, 67. So this ROI is 21%. Cash flow is 473. That would be a good deal for someone, okay? You wanna keep, in my opinion, you wanna be close to 18 to 20, 18 and higher percent 
the higher the better. So you can even try to sell it for 23. And now you're at 18.92%, you know. So a house in Detroit, it might not, you know, it might be worth 30, but that might be the value or 40 might be the value. It's going to be, it's not a fix and flip, it's a rental. So you're looking for cash flow. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, so that's how I use it. That's what I figure out, you know, how I do the, you know, my acquisition price. Like I got one today that I'm trying to get for 13,000 and it probably needs about 10 grand. And the rent is actually 800. So the management fee would be $80. Taxes are about 100. So you got 480 cash flow. It's at 25%. Oh, wait, I got it at 13. So I'm going to sell it for 19.5. We're at 20, 19 and a half. Okay. So if you're trying to do 15% ROI, no, no one's going to buy it in Detroit. You know, unless you have, unless you got someone that buys those, you know. Um, I have one in Flint right now. I'll, I'll show it to you. Um, let me pull it up. The ROI is killer. You know, Flint's just a different market. I talked to an investor yesterday and, um, and he loves it actually. So hopefully he'll buy it. I'll know tonight. Let me pull it up here. I'll show you that right away. Thirty three point six seven percent, you know, so the house is moving ready. You could move someone in here and let's say they get six ninety five in rent. Their ROI is still 30%. It's the taxes are only 59. You get six, it's a great deal. It's moving ready. You can rent it out. I mean, it's a no brainer. And I'm selling it for 16.5. I figure once they move out, it's moving ready, but they might put a thousand dollars into it. You know, just cleaning it up, cleaning it out, little miscellaneous stuff. So they're gonna be in it for 17.5. Rent's gonna be at least 6.95 or more. You got taxes, insurance, management fee, reserve for maintenance. If you manage it yourself, it's 35%. So that's how I figure it out. That's how I do the counts. I had a question, Todd. Yes. Uh, so I'm a real estate agent and um, I'm looking to uh, start investing. Uh, where do you find, uh, some, what are some of the ways that you find your properties? Um, you know what? So you want to invest your, I'm a real estate agent also. Yeah. I see. Yeah. You got the MLS. Yeah. All kinds of things you could, there's, you could go to Craigslist and look for houses. You could go to for sale by owners and look for houses. You could buy, you could drive for dollars. That's, that's probably one of the better ways. What is that? Driving for dollars, you drive a neighborhood of a of an area you want to be in, and you okay. for houses that you know might be boarded up or they haven't been fixed up. They just look like they're in rough condition. Yeah, rundown. Yeah, rundown. They haven't been fixed up in like 25 years, and you get those addresses. You could knock on the door. You could drop off a notice. You could find their phone number and call them. You can mail them a letter. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on what you're looking to do. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. This Monday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, mm -hmm. my office here in White Lake. Um, anyone that wants to come is more than welcome. We're going to be making phone calls. Um, bring your own stuff to call. If you're new, you could just watch and mm -hmm. listen. 
and you know you'll get some coaching um, here and there because I want to concentrate on actually making phone calls. Yeah. Sometimes it's just good to listen to people and write down your notes and we can critique it later and, and answer questions because I really wanted that three hours of um, to be productive, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so I'm going to start doing that. Um, I want to try to do that four or five times a day. I mean, excuse me, a week. That's, that's really, really important. You know, if I'm making phone calls for three hours a day, Mm -hmm. There's no reason I shouldn't make two, three or more leads, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, you spend an hour calling the follow-ups and you spend a couple of hours of calling new people. Okay. Yep. So that's a good strategy. Anyone could come out. I got a few guys coming in and um, it's going to be a good time. When is that? Monday at 9 a.m. is the first one. Okay. Coming up Monday? Yep. Coming up Monday. Yep. And we're going to be, it's at the office here at 9440 White, uh, Elizabeth Lake Road in White Lake. I got some good guys supposed to be coming. Uh, Jay, um, what's his last name? Um, Jay, Jay, Jay. I can't remember his last name, darn it. He's a, he's a real estate agent. Um, he's probably 80% agent and 20% wholesaler. So he's gonna be, and he's really good at finding off market and um, you know listings. So he's gonna be calling listings and, um, and I'm the opposite. I'm probably 20, 80, you know, 20% agent, maybe 10% agent, 90% wholesaler, so. Mm -hmm. And then Eric Friday might be coming in, and he's probably primarily a wholesaler. So, so it's good to listen to other people. It's good to help each other out. So let me go. Um, so, Sharif, what do you are you a are you do you want to wholesale? Do you want to do agent work? What do you want to do? Mm, I'm looking like wholesale like either get a rental properties or uh, I want to start with the rental property and then like fix and flips okay have you ever flipped a house yet no not yet I've sold a few but not not flipped okay so you sold some deals through as an agent yeah what company are you with uh Carrington Rogers and Dyer my father he's a real estate broker so nice. he's been doing it for about 20 25 years so what does he have a 50 50 split with you um it just depends on the deal but no <laughs> yeah no not at all all right good and all right so um you might know this already but you know i think the times are changing a, slightly the market is hot as can be mm -hmm. and but there's still some there's always going to be some creative financing deals out there you're, you you look like a young kid. You're probably around 21, 22. Uh, 19. I'll be 20. Right. You're young. My son just turned 21. He's an agent here. Oh, he good. should be um, here Monday morning also. But anyways, um, if you want to find rental properties for yourself, uh, you know, either you got the cash to find it or you got the credit and, and you could get the loans and things like that. But another way is creative financing. I just got one in Southfield today mm -hmm. and I'm giving the owner like less than $2,000. Mm -hmm. I'm taking over his mortgage payments. Okay. So, you know, if I went and got a loan and paid them off, I'm going to have a payment, right? Yeah. So here I don't have to go get a loan. I could just take over his low interest mortgage payments give them a couple of grand. And when you go get a loan to buy a rental, you're going to have to pay 20% down, 25% down, things like that. So here you don't have to do that. So I could go and assume the mortgage, give them a few bucks, clean up the house and rent it. Right. Or I could wholesale it. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I could just wholesale it, let someone else step in and pay the payments and give me my fee and take it over. Or I just wholesale it straight out and someone just pays it off completely, you know. So it's just, a, you know, a way of doing it. I also just got connected with a company. Um, they, they got a program called Connection. Well, first they got a program with transactional funding. Um, does anyone not know what that means? So everyone knows what transactional funding is, right? Nope, go ahead. All right, so transactional funding. So let's say I got a wholesale deal and I'm making 15 grand on it, all right? And let's say it's a Rosedale Park and I got it for 50 and I'm selling it for 65,000 and I'm gonna make 15 grand. And for, for whatever reason, um, I don't want the buyer to know that I'm making 15 grand. That's one reason why you use transactional funding, okay? Or you don't want the seller know you're making 15 grand, okay? So what you do is you, you get transactional funding. So what that means is I go and borrow the 50 grand for a day, one day, okay? So the A to B closing. So I'm buying it from the seller and I'm the B, okay? I'm buying it for 50 grand, if you follow me. I go get transactional funding that comes with the money, with the 50 grand, and, and then that same day, within 10 minutes later, I sell it B to C, okay? So I sell it to my end buyer for 65,000, and then my guy that paid that transactional funding gets paid back that day that day so I borrowed that money for a day if that or less than a day usually the cost of that is like two percent so if I borrowed 50 grand I'm paying him a thousand dollars to provide that service for me I don't have to use my money or I don't if I don't have 50 grand you don't have to use it he's he's take you know he's doing the deal I'm buying it and then I'm selling it to the next guy that's called transactional funding. Usually it's for one day, okay? So I, I'm set up with someone that um, works with wholesalers like us. So if anyone ever needs it or thinks they might need it, just feel free to contact me. We'll talk about it and um, I could set you up with that, okay? Um, there's a lot of people that do transactional funding. It's not hard. Some make it easy, some make it difficult. This company, it makes it real easy, okay? And um, some people wanna see the deal, they wanna see the title, they wanna check you out, they wanna check this out, and they want a week's advance notice, things like that. No, it's a little, they want you to jump through some hoops, you know, and this other way, it's, it's a lot different, a lot quicker, a lot faster. They're looking at the deal, not you at all, so. It, it's a it's a good way to go all right so yeah, okay now that you describe it I, i've done that before yeah um, this was about probably about 10 years ago and i remember like you said there was there were some you know like hoops i had to go through but um i, I did remember um it's exactly as you described the question that i have with that though is um if it's over a certain amount doesn't it raise flags or you know people start to question, okay, you know, what's this for and that kind of thing. And how do you get around all that kind of thing? Hmm. Who would it raise flags to? What do you mean? Like say, um, if it's going to the, I, I'm, for my, in my situation, it was sent to the bank, right? Into my account. And, you know, just for, you know, that time period that I needed it for. Um, but, it, you know, it, there was, you know, one person that kind of, you know, where are you getting these funds and, you know, how, how did you get them, et cetera, et cetera, where they come from, what are you using them for, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So the way they do it now or the way it would get done is they would wire the funds to the title company. Never would go to your bank. 
the title company because for some reason if it doesn't close or something like that you know the title company controls it so before you're gonna they're gonna send it to the title company they're gonna make sure your your c buyer the person you're selling it to wires his money first to the title company all right so once then it's 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 like 99 percent sure he's gonna close it you know the only time he's not is if he gets hit by a car on the way to the title company all right so it's a pretty pretty secure or confident that they're gonna close so once your guy wires it to the title company the c the guy you're selling it to then the transactional funder is gonna wire his money for you to the title company. So it never goes into your bank account, anything like that. It's a lot smoother. The title company understands what you're doing and it's 100% legal. You know, you're borrowing the money, you're paying for it. It's only costing you a few, you know, 2% and and then you're closing it and now you're double you're you're, you're going to close it and sell it to somebody else. Then you become the seller. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that version better. Yeah, because if they send it to your bank account, what what if you're what if you take the money and never close? <laughs> you know. Right, 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 right. So, but that's that's a transaction, and the same company, really good people, they do they got a program which I was happy to hear about it. I would have used it. It's called Construction Plus. So what they, the service they provide, they help out a lot of newer fix and flippers. Um, someone might, might never done one before, or someone that only does one a year, or a couple few times a year, things like that, or they have a full-time job, and they wanna get into the flip business. So what they provide is a service, let's say I have a house in Redford, I want to fix and flip it. They'll come out there, look at it with you, and they'll write up an estimate of everything you want to want to do to the house to turn it so you could flip it. Okay. And then they'll give you a price and they'll manage the project. They'll manage the contractors. They have their own contractors. They have their own painters, um, roofers, everything. So you don't have to be involved at all. And, um, and, they, and they'll make sure that, you know, they'll give you a price and, I'm sh and, and it sounds like their price, it's not gonna be the cheapest, but it's not gonna be the most expensive. It's gonna be a fair price. So just from my experience, I went the cheap route on my fix and flips many a times, not, not for materials, but for guys, you know, trying to find the cheapest, Painter, the cheapest furnace guy, the cheapest this, the cheapest that. And it works out well sometimes and other times you might double pay because they don't do it right or they take off with your money and you got to come back and redo it. So it's um, this is a reputable, reputable company and you're, they're not going to have to, you're not going to have to worry about that. And that's, that's a big thing. You know, they'll organize it and and they update you, you know what's going on at all times. So it's a really good, um, sophisticated process, actually. They, 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 it's not like just someone saying, okay, I'm gonna do this, and they do it. I mean, there's contracts involved, there, you're gonna get weekly updates, you're gonna know exactly what's going on at all times. So um, it's, it's something, so if anyone's in, ready to get into the fix and flip business, I highly recommend especially for someone that's beginning to give them a shot, you know, at least let them look and see what the work is about or, you know, and then you could eventually watch them learn and, and look at their process and try to copy it. You know, why do they, you know, when you're fixing and flipping a house, of course, you're going to clean out the house first. Um, why do they, you know, you're going to order everything first. Like I'm doing one in Harper Woods right now for somebody and you know I'm cleaning out the house I ordered the windows I ordered the roof I ordered the kitchen because they take three four weeks to get in get in 
you know, get in here. I met the handyman out here, went over the deal with him, met the painter out there to get his price. That's the first week of progress, you know, is what you want to do is get that all, everything lined up and, and try to organize it. So that's, um, that's what you do with the fix and flips for sure. What's the name of the company? Um, you know what? Send me a text. I'll get you their name, but the program's called Construction Plus. And I might be able to get it before, we, before we're off the line here. Okay. Oh. And also, uh, tell me about the Southfield one you got. You might have somebody for that one. Yeah, I just got a nice Southfield one. It's a ranch-style house, over 1,200 square foot. It has like a six-car garage on it. My opinion the garage needs to be torn down. You know, it's, it's in pretty rough shape. But the roof on the house is good. It has a skylight in the living room, three bedroom, one bath, no basement, um, laundry room, just a nice little house, um, clean. Um, the rents over there are 1200 or more a month. And um, we're asking 749 on the property. And um, it could be a flip, it could be a rental. I think it's, uh, you know, I'm leaning towards it's a little bit of a better rental. And um, roof is good, not too bad of, in condition. A rental, you probably got to throw 10 grand into it. A flip, you're going to put 20 plus, maybe 25, something like that. You know, and the ARV over there, I was looking at it today, they're about 130,000 right in that area. Yeah, if you have the information for that one, I would love that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, send me a, send me a text and um, let's see here. Let me see if I could find this information for, yeah, here's the Construction Plus. Sound Management Incorporated, real nice guy, Mr. Redding. Um, so I got a flyer on it. I could get you, I could set you up with them. Just send me a, either a text message. You know, I wouldn't really talk to them unless you're getting close to getting the deal. Okay. And in setting something up and then I could, I'll text you guys together and okay. introduce you and do it that way. Yep. Are you, um, Sharif, are you looking for deals every day? What are you, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for deals now. Um, like ASAP, I'm trying to get a, a rental. I've been looking just like on the MLS and a little bit like off market. So I'm like, I better start going to different meetups and meetings and see what kind of properties and deals I can find. But. Right. Um, are you sending out any what, are you, what t any type of marketing you're doing? I haven't started marketing yet, but that's what I'm going to start next. But you're a licensed real estate agent, right? Yeah. Um, have you wholesaled any deals yet? No. Okay, so you're pretty new? Yeah, pretty new. Okay. Are you working anywhere besides as a real estate agent? Yeah, as a, a computer science intern. Okay, great. That's good. I think my one son's gonna be doing that. Yeah, it's uh, it's not a bunch. It's a lot of math. Not sure how much I like it, but it is what it is. Great. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. What else? What else you guys got? Any any deals that you want to pitch or services or any other questions? I had a question about um, uh, bandit signs. Um, yep. In terms of um, having a 24-hour pre-recorded message, and and how does that work? Or have you ever done that? You mean like if someone calls the bandit sign? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, maybe Mark. Mark, can you step in there? How do you do yours? Oh, hang on. Let me let me hit you off mute. Maybe I got to do it. I don't know. All right, hang on. Nope. I think you got to do it, Mark. Unmute. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. 
So um, there's a couple of things. There's a uh, we've got a YouTube channel. It's, uh, YouTube forward slash Ralph Moppin. Uh, or just Google my name, Mark Moppin, and it'll come up. The YouTube channel actually walks you through how to use bandit signs and what we do. Uh, what, what I do is I use a, a, a call tracker jack and I can send that to you. Some of our other videos talk about it. What a call tracker jack does is all comes in. Uh, I'm, I'm running another business, so like I generate leads for people like Todd. So when I get the call, the, the tracker jack records it. And what it says to the person when they call in, they say this call may be recorded for quality purposes. And what it's saying to me is uh, bandit sign, yard sign, internet lead. It's telling me what it is. And then I'm talking to them the next thing, but I know that it, it's a call that's from my uh, bandit signs or my internet marketing or whatever. And it's recording everything, so I don't have to write anything down. I can be in my car. I can do anything I want. And then it's going to text me the recording of that call. It's also going to email it to me. And then I can just forward that call to somebody like Todd, who will instantly get back with the person to set it up. That's how I do it. And you could have the call if you weren't answering forward on to, a, to another, uh, to an answering machine or something. Yeah. Help you any? Yeah. So Mark answers the calls when they come in. Um, I've in the past, what I've done is they went to a recording that said, um, please leave your name, um, address or name, 10 digit phone number and the address um, that you're calling about or, you know, that you want to sell and I'll call you back today. That's what I used to put. Um, if you look on my screen here, there's a service and there's a lot of these different services. Um, but a lot of people I've seen use Pat Live. If you ever heard about them, they're live virtual receptionists. Um, I know Mark, you used a uh, live um, for the donation company, I think, or something before that worked really well. So there's different answering, you know, people that could actually answer the cause for you and say what you want them to say and take the basic information, things like that, so. Exactly, there, I use a national call center for yeah. charity that takes donated real estate and right. nationwide. And I run a call center for that. But I think it's, you, if you can answer as many of them as you can, it makes a difference. And if you listen to last week, it was just put up, and I think Amanda's on this call. I owe a whole bunch of stuff, but we just got the video rendered. The meeting we did where we did a training into the 10 questions that you want to find out when you get a, uh, from somebody. Uh, they're, they're great questions because it, it takes you right down to what you need to know wholesaler to put a deal together. If you watch that video, it's on the on there. Just up. actually, I just emailed it out today to the meetup group. So, yeah, one thing um, I went on a call today with uh, another wholesaler uh, friend of mine, and he's done it a while, but you know, you you kind of learn. Everyone has their own style. And when I, when I go with people, I'm going to tell them my style. They got to figure out what's best for them. I don't bring a clipboard with me. Um, I really don't bring anything. I might bring my iPad because right now I'm using it as my phone, you know, but I got it in my arm. No one even knows I really have it. And, um, and when, when you go there, you want to try to, um, like I went into a part one today. He's as serious as can be. Um, Mrs. Jones, how you doing? We're here to look at the house and this and that. I'm like, Ooh, how you doing? Let me shut this door. We've got to keep this air in this house. Ooh, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. You know, and she starts smiling and everything else. So you just gotta be, you gotta put on a show 
without getting too crazy, you know, and you got to be nice. Um, you don't want to be, it's nothing about the house. It really is not. It's about, you really got to figure out what the problem is. If they just want to sell their house and you're a wholesaler, you're not getting the deal. They're not going to sell it to you. I'm telling you right now, there's no way you're going to talk them into it. No way you're going to give them a look because we buy houses for cheap prices. Okay. So there's got to be a problem and we got to figure out what that problem is, how we can solve it and make them, you know, make it, make them, you know, make it where it works for them and it works for us. Pe people will, will trade where you could close fast at your price, um, you know, for equity, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, you could even tell the people, I, you know, why, why are you selling it to me? Why don't you just put the 20 grand into the house and then you could sell it for 75,000. Okay. So you're always trying to talk them out of working with you. Okay. Because if they say, that's right, I'm going to do that. Then you never had a deal in the first place. Okay. 99% of the time, they're going to say, I can't do that. Okay. Why don't you, why don't you, you know, put 20 grand into the house, fix it up nice, sell it with a real estate agent and get top dollar. It might take 60, 90, you know, three, four, five months, but you're going to get more money. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Okay. And then, and you know, what we do, and then you explain to them, we're going to take the house as is. You don't have to, you take what you want out of the house, leave the rest. Okay. Now they don't even have to think about cleaning it out. Right. I always do that because if they got to think about cleaning it out, that could be a pain. That's usually a pain point. None of the family's going to help them. Half the stuff they don't even want. They just want to, and you want to get them out as fast as you can. You know, the faster you get them out because the guy you're selling in the house to, or the lady or the investor, they don't want to, they don't, they don't want them in the house. They want them out nine times out of 10. Okay. So leave the stuff and let's get this thing closed. So that's, um, so what I was basically, what I'm trying to say is you gotta be, you gotta put on a show, you gotta be friendly, you gotta be nice, but don't be so serious and start writing down the repairs and, Oh, let me figure this out because now you're, you know, you can let them know. Look, I don't fix up houses. I've been doing this for a long time. I have crews that do that. So I know what I'm doing. A broken window is a broken window. The windows are old. Always tell them some good things about the house. Don't always just tell them all the bad things, you know. Tell them, oh, man, you got a pretty nice kitchen here. Oh, man, you got this. Oh, man, you got that. Oh, the furnace is decent. Well, you know, I'm going to have to put a hot water tank in, but at least the furnace is decent. You know, things like that. So you, you don't want to talk too negatively about the house. They know how bad it is. And um, you tell them a little bit of both, you know. That way, when you're talking to them and you're figuring out the price, and I heard this the other day. This, this was, I was reading a, um, the book. It, I wasn't reading. I listened to audiobooks. If you ever heard of Never Split the Difference, Wait, was it? Yeah, that was it. Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. A really good book. I read it like, or listened to it like four times. I listened to it every six months. Learned something every time. So they do at Ackerman, when they make offers, here's what he does. When he does his research before he goes in. And, and that, this is in any type of negotiations, not just wholesale. He talks about all types of negotiation. He likes to anchor it low, 65%, okay? I like to go 53% of the value, what I think it is, all right? So 53%, let's say if you're at 100, let's say it's worth 100 off fixed up, just to make it easy. So my first offer is 53,000, okay? Then, then from there, um, you, wanna, you wanna anchor it two more times, okay? So you know, you, whatever your, Whatever your top price is, let's say the the most you're you're gonna pay for this property is sixty thousand dollars. All right, let me back up. 
Oh, I just want to be clear. I kind of confused it. If it's worth a hundred and your top offer is 70, you follow me? You want to go 53% of $70,000. All right. You want that first. So 53% of 70 is $37,100. You let them know the most I could pay is $37,000, right? So there's my first price. You know, your top price is a, is 70. And then you start from there. If you come really low, they're going to say, no way, no way I could do 37,000. And, and you could say, well, this, 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 and this, the COVID's going on, this, this, and this, you know, I can't pay, you know, what is the number? You know, a lot of times they might have a number in mind. What is the number they could do? So let's say they say, well, the most I could do is 60. All right. You're at 37. They say 60. Now you already won. You're already at 10 grand lower than your top price. Okay. So you're going to say, look, I can't do, I can't do 60. And then you're going to go, um, what I do is I go like 80% of my top price. Okay. Which is $56,000. Okay. Or I might go 80% of their top price. Again, there's no specific, which would be $48,000. So I said, I can't do 37. But if I could do 48,000 and, and pay your closing costs and, um, and blah, 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 you kind of try to throw something in, you know, close it fast, whatever, you know, and, and then you be quiet, see what they say. So they said, you said, they said 60, now you're at 48. And you came up from 37,000. And so, and then from there, they might say, no, I can't do it. And you can say, well, I can't do 60. Um, what, you know, if I was able to, you know, pay the closing costs, this and that, just like I told you already, and close on your timeline, what is the least, I don't even know if I could do it. What is the least amount you would consider? And you're always, you already won at 60. Right, because you you said you you already figured it out. Seventy is your number, all right. So it's just. Um, but anyways, that was Chris Voss. Uh, you know, you 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 want to anchor your first price very very low, where it's embarrassing, and and you don't have to just say thirty seven thousand. You could say, hey, how you, you know? Would you consider? You know, you always ask them their price, and they, they don't want to give it to you, and say, how about you know? With everything I got to do in this, how about 37000 Would that work? Kind of say it like jokingly, all right? Because you don't want to piss them off yet either, you know. And then see what they say. Just let them talk. Let them vent. Let them do whatever. And, you, and, and then take it from there. Because you never know what they're thinking. You never know, you know. So, that, that, anyway, that's just some things you got to do when you're – you got to give them that low number. You got to, you know, I, I told someone that last week, I think my price was like two grand. They wanted 20 and my first price was two grand. And, um, I, I ended up getting the house, not even close to the 20. It was like $11,000, something like that. So just because what they tell you, you just got to, you know, because that really, that's all it's worth. You can't, you really got to find their pain point and then take it from there for sure. All right. Sorry for rambling. Anything else guys, any, um, anybody have any deals that they want to pitch or any other questions? What are you guys doing tomorrow for business? Um, I'm going to be going out doing some, not tomorrow, but over the weekend, going out doing some more driving for dollars. And when you drive for dollars, how do you get your phone numbers? I look them up on uh, True People Search. Yep. Do you, are you, do you, did you pay for that or is that free? No, that's free. It's been hit and miss. 
There's one that's pretty cheap that I've always liked. I don't know. I've been using it for a couple of years for a backup. It's called Ben Verified. Oh yeah. Ben Verified. It's it's like ten bucks a month. You know, so and and if true people search is working for you, wonderful. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, driving for dollars to me is a great way of doing things, you know, for sure. I was talking to some guys today about the auction, the foreclosure auction in Wayne County, trying to figure out, we have no idea when they're going to open that up. No idea. They're not even publishing, yeah. publishing them. I think it's not going to be this year for the rest of the year, so. <clears throat> But going after tired landlords, that would probably be a good source to go after, you know, because some, a lot of renters are not paying. And if they weren't paying beforehand, they can't evict them, things like that. They're pretty tired. Pretty tired, so. But, um, yeah. But anyone that, you know, if you have any questions, Amanda, anything else for you? No, I'm all set. Nothing right, right. now anyway. Just trying to work on some other ones. Awesome. Any other questions for anyone else? Mark, what do we got coming up? Uh, next Tuesday, we're going to let you show how to show how to comp. Yep. And, uh, and you got one. Um, yeah, so anyone for next Tuesday, if anyone has any particular actually property that they want me to comp out for them, um, I can show you how I do it, all right? It's pretty simple, only it, it's probably a five minute process, you know. Um, I would love for people to bring some samples of um, some Detroit properties and some suburb properties. So you can figure it out of uh, what they comp. And as wholesalers, you know, you just got to do your best, you know, trying to figure it out. Um, if you're going to buy a property to fix and flip it, you better be pretty spot on, right? Don't take the wholesaler's word for it, you know. And everyone looks at things differently. And I'll explain that you know why because if i was a flipper in this market is pretty competitive if you're a flipper and you either you're in a real estate agent and you list your own house so you don't have to pay that three percent when you list it and maybe you have a, a crew that works for you and you pay them by the hour and you get the work done cheaper or you you do some of the work yourself, those people pay more than what I would pay because I don't do the work. Of course, I would sell it myself, but six months ago, I wouldn't have. I would have sold, had someone else sell it. So that's 3% I'm saving. And, and so you can't, as a wholesaler, you can't always figure out, well, this is going to be $20,000 worth of work because that's what I would spend. No. Maybe someone else, it's only $15,000 worth of work. Someone else, it might be $20,000 worth of work or more. So you just try to get a fair price, figure it out in your numbers, and price it accordingly. And pitch it out to, the, to everyone and let them do their own due diligence, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, for, for, for me, I figure out a system that works and then I ramp it up. Like right now, I've got somebody in my driveway handing out hand your house bandit signs with them tomorrow. And, oh, he's, uh, hand right, he's writing a handwriting them? Yeah, he is. So, But uh, guys, if you're listening, uh, the video that we just shipped out today was how to get started in flipping. It's an hour and a half long, but it it's there's some great stuff in it uh you know like how to find fix flip houses it's a good overview then there's a 10 minute one that we did in there uh that if you go to the youtube channel was real estate lead generation how to do it 
Zoom meetings that Todd does, like what he's doing right now, they're on the site too. And there's a lot of times where there's training inside those. Right. Before that, we had one where Todd uh, did um, how to use the buyer favorable purchase agreement, how to do a three part offer uh, and give people choices. That was excellent. So you can watch that video, all that stuff's on there. And you had a probate, mm -hmm. probate attorney we had. So, I mean, a YouTube channel, there's no charge to it. The only thing we're asking is, is that you work on generating more people because the more networking we do and the more of this, um, the better things will turn out for you. So, absolutely. Uh, and you had a great idea that um, the other day, Mark, is which we should just start doing more five minute, 10 minute videos, quick, quick tip videos of, you know, yeah. informational videos so we can post up and then people don't have to wait, you know, listen to some for an hour and a half. And yeah, I just did the one for lead generation for 10 minutes. It's, you know, it won't kill you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I, you listen to one for an hour and a half and there's a little more to chew. Yeah, I'm going to start doing some like um, when I'm walking through a house, do a five minute video of walking through a house and what I'm looking at. And then um, part one. And then the next time I go through it, part two. And then maybe after I sell it, part three, stuff like that. You know, I think that would be kind of neat. Yeah, and I know I, I owe everybody forms from that one meeting. Uh, we really got it rendered really late. So I'll done and out before the uh, end of the week so I apologize if anybody's waiting for this for me, so. have you um, done any videos on building your cash buyers list uh, yeah we we've got it in there but you know that would be a really good one on how to do a, a 10 minute video on just banging that out yeah I'll write, that. I'll write that down I got a couple yeah. good ideas yeah. I got a couple good ideas on if, that if, one. yeah that would be really good. If you're brand new, you get yourself a buyer's list is uh, you can site Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. You can go to uh, like Yellow Page Scraper, scrape all the uh, real estate agents in, in the county or the whole state, scrape all the builders, scrape all the mortgage people. Uh, you know, and then there's certain people that are good buyers, owners of party stores, or usually all own real estate. So you could you could scrape those different people, and then uh, you when you scrape it, it gives you their phone number. It also gives you their email, so you can do email blasting and phone do it, uh, phone out. And that that list will probably only cost you like maybe ten or fifteen bucks doing it. That way. You can even buy the software for Yellow Page Scraper. Right. That's, that kind of stuff works. Getting going. And Mark, on your meetup site, how many people you got on your meetup site? There's uh, just shy of 6,000 people in our market. So yeah. So, yeah. If uh, you get it, so if anyone gets a deal, not only you, post it on on Facebook, there's so many sites you could post it on Facebook, Craigslist. But you Craigslist. can ship it out to our list. Yeah, the list is right here, real estate-425 at meetup.com. They'll go to the, everyone on the email list. Yeah, when you get an email from us out of that, yeah, same same place you would email. Right, like here's a couple of- crazy with it where you're sending out 20 emails a day, people get pissed off. Like, look, Mark, you you list you you see these right here. These were sent out today. Yeah, Marilyn Banks. Um, she sent out this one here. This is what it looks like. Looking for investors that want to purchase fixer uppers in Detroit. Okay. Yeah. So she does. She uses it. Um, I used it the other day. Craigslist. I used it. Mark Facebook Marketplace is great. I've been using both of those two. And I'm getting tons of responses for, for from people. You know, these are people that you know really are not investors. So I'm, but anyway, 
I'm, get, I'm getting great responses from that. So those are some good things for when you want to sell a deal, but to get your buyer's list, I mean, those are people that want to buy it. So that's what you're looking for, yeah. you know, so. And um, you can always partner up with other people in the business. Um, and that, you know, cause I got right now, I got a couple really good Detroit buyers and really good. And all you need is a couple, you know, people that are buying every day and um, one, a couple in Flint now. So and for more. You, you tag on to somebody that's real active, like Todd, go on to his Facebook page and post your deal there. Yeah, and you could also scrape Facebook. Anytime you go to these different pages and people are saying, I got deals. Um, and when people say, yeah, send me the deal, DM me, DM me, DM me. Uh, I'm interested, I'm interested. Get their, get their information, reach out to them, find out what they're looking for and at, see if you can add them to your buyers list. You know, that stuff is fine, but. Take, take your Detroit properties or your Michigan properties and post them on California. Yep. Absolutely. The, the yeah. deals that you're put on there, what, what it costs them to have a garage door put on there. Yeah. So they're going to be a lot more receptive to people call and say, oh, that's a hot market. They're willing to take the risk. That's a good way to find out state buyers. Right. What'd you say, Amanda? I was asking if Mark said post your Michigan deals in California. I do. Okay. Yeah. 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 I've been I, I've, I've been I've actually mine in China. I haven't had any <laughs> response yet, but Oh, there was a, a one that came through from China I sent you today. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> I was that was crazy. Yeah, I remember. Oh, I did remember seeing that. I don't <laughs> had a phone number or anything like that, but I think it had a, a Skype number. I don't know. Right, I'll look at it. <laughs> yeah, but I yeah, hope so. there's not a language barrier. <laughs> My last name is Chun, so I know how to speak Chinese. Yeah. Uh, there is a um, duplex in Michigan Woods that I wanted to run by you. Okay. You think that's a hot market? Harper Woods is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it on Kelly? Um, no, it's not on Kelly. It is on Lake Common. Okay. Hey, hey guys, I'm gonna get off the call. I've got it. All right, Mark. Moment. Okay. See Thanks. You. I'm. It's good talking to everybody. See you, brother. Do you want me to? We can look at it later if you want, Amanda. Okay, yeah, that would be great. Pat, are you rec are you recording this, I hope? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> yeah, if you want, I could look it up. The only thing with Ross Common, I could tell you, let me let me show you something on Ross Common, okay? I'm gonna just go to I think I'm gonna head out too, Todd. Thank you. All right, thanks, man. I'll be in contact um, about that Southfield property. Okay, sounds great. All right, thanks again. Yep. How do you spell Ross Common? R O S C O N. One S. Two M's? No, yep. only thing I'm thinking, of, you see how it says Harper Woods here? Yeah. All right, I was looking for the school district. It's still Harper Woods, so that's good. That's like the border of Detroit and Harper Woods. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah. yeah, so that's good. It's in the Harper Woods side, so great. Yeah, we could talk. Let's talk about that one. Okay. All right, see what's going on. But again, uh, Monday at 9 a.m. at the office here, Anyone that wants to come and make phone calls or listen or watch or whatever, feel free. That's where that's where it happens. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again. Any other questions or everyone good? I'm all set. All good. 
All right. Thanks again. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Have a good day.